A quote from George Lucas, I see the anti-EU slash star log quote humping crowd throw around to try and discredit the expanded universe was something he said in regards to the history between the Jedi and Sith Order. George Lucas supposedly claimed that there were no wars between the Jedi and Sith, despite there being wars and conflicts between both sides being depicted in various forms of media in Star Wars lore. And the expanded universe haters and Starlog quote humpers like to cherry pick and use this quote to try and say, See? 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 He says there are no wars between the Jedi and the Sith. Therefore, the Old Republic era was fan fiction, and the expanded universe was never canon. People like Grim Alkin, aka Grim on the Dark Side, and Logan Veracruz, and I'm surprised Force Wave 1139 didn't cherry pick it for use in his article i have used this quote online everywhere. I want to go over this quote and any other things Lucas has said and why this specific cherry pick quote is actually not relevant today in the discussion and their attempts to try and discredit the Star Wars Expanded Universe. On May 2019, on StarWars.com, an article called An Oral History of Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. This interview included snippets of words between Lucas and the other filmmakers who worked on The Phantom Menace. In the quote taken from the interview, the expanded universe was never canon and Starlog quote humping crowd used. George Lucas said this, Everybody said, oh well, there was a war between the Jedi and the Sith. Well, that never happened. That's just made up by fans or somebody. What really happened is, the Sith ruled the universe for a while, 2,000 years ago. Each Sith had an apprentice, but the problem was, each Sith Lord got to be more powerful, and these Sith Lords would try to kill each other because they all wanted to be the most powerful. So in the end, they killed each other off, and there wasn't anything left. So the idea is that when you have a Sith Lord and he has an apprentice, the apprentice is always trying to recruit somebody to join him because he's not strong enough, usually, so that he can kill his master. Now, from just this quote, you'd think this would discredit the expanded universe, huh? And you could try and use it in an argument to delegitimize it and use it as evidence to try and prove the expanding universe wasn't ever canon. In a bit, I'll explain why this quote doesn't even make sense in the context of the lore of Star Wars we know just from G canon and the movies themselves, and why the timing, when this quote basically came out, doesn't make this evidence in quote relevant today in the EU canon debate. And I will bring up other pieces of evidence I found in my own research. For one, this quote came out in 2019. After George Lucas sold Star Wars and had lost any creative control over the Star Wars franchise itself, Lucas no longer has any say on canon or the lore now. So what he says after he's sold it is irrelevant and no longer matters in the discussion on the EU and canon today. Even if he does not consider Disney canon to be canon because he said he lost control and it's not his Star Wars. But anyways, what really matters in this specific discussion is what he said when he was owner of Lucasfilm and Star Wars. I just so happened to find some really good sources of information from earlier issues of Star Wars Insider. Specifically, Insider issue 78 from 2004, where Lucas mentions the history of the Jedi Sith conflict. In Star Wars Insider issue 78, Lucas said the following and explicitly mentioned conflict happening between the Jedi and the Sith, and that the Jedi got rid of the Sith. The Sith are the arch enemies of the Jedi, Lucas explained, and for a long time, they ruled the universe until the Jedi came along and got rid of them. The Sith characters in the previous Star Wars films were Darth Vader and the other apprentices. Darth Maul from Episode 1 and Count Dooku, or Darth Tyrannus. From Episode 2 and the soon-to-be-released Episode 3, the evil Master Sith in all the films is Darth Sidious, who becomes Emperor of the Universe. In the same Insider issue, Lucasfilm second-hand paraphrases George Lucas to explain why the Sith want revenge on the Jedi Order. But what they say is still relevant, since they are referencing Lucas and what he had said. Even if it's secondhand, 
Lucasfilm is asked, why do the Sith want revenge? And Lucasfilm answers back, the Sith are the natural enemy of the Jedi. As George Lucas describes it, the Sith were in control of the galaxy 1,000 years in the past. Unfortunately, the Sith's hunger for conquest got the better of them. So many Sith Lords were vying for ultimate control that it led to infighting among their ranks. Such internecine struggles were exploited by the Jedi Knights of the era, and they were able to turn the tide and defeat the Sith. By episode 3, the Sith were ready to reveal themselves. There is no more need for subterfuge. No more need for skulking in the shadows. Darth Sidious, the ma Sith mastermind, will make good on a 1,000 year old plot to finally avenge the Fallen Order, destroy the Jedi Knights, and retake command of the galaxy. Seeing George Lucas explicitly say that the Sith are the arch enemies of the Jedi, implying conflict, and outright saying that the Jedi got rid of the Sith, meaning conflict did happen, because in order to get rid of them there would have to be conflict. And his company's paraphrase of his words saying that George set forth and reiterating that the Sith once again are the Jedi's natural enemies, wanting explicit revenge for their defeat at the hands of the Jedi, and that the Jedi exploited the infighting to turn the tide to defeat them, really tells me that there were historic conflicts battles and wars between the Jedi and Sith. 2. George Lucas's statement from that cherry-picked 2019 quote does not make sense even in the context of what we know from the previous movies by themselves. From the original Star Wars we know that the Jedi had been around for a long time. For over a thousand generations the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic. With a generation being a span of years for a group born. A thousand generations would mean the Jedi have been around for thousands of years. They would have been around during this time Lucas described. Considering the Jedi were called by Obi-Wan, the guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic, and the Sith were taking over most of the galaxy and ruling it, the Phantom Menace novelization talks about the history of the Sith and Darth Bane. The book references whom would later be identified as Darth Ruin in the Expanded Universe as someone who broke away from the Jedi and fell to the dark side and caused a schism within the Jedi Order, restarting the Sith. This is all from Lucas's notes. Why would the Jedi just sit there and do nothing to fight back against the Sith as they take over and oppress others with their rule? It's the Jedi's nature and way to protect others. Common sense would tell you the Jedi would do something about this if this kind of conflict was going on. Remember, George himself said the Sith were the arch enemy of the Jedi. You're seriously going to tell me they did nothing while their arch enemy was running rampantly through the galaxy. George even said in the quotes above that the Jedi got rid of them. The Sith. If the Sith had that level of control over the galaxy, it would have taken an armed conflict to get rid of them from the galaxy and unseat them from their seat of power. It's basic common sense something would have been done about it with what we know of the Jedi and the lore around them. Right in the Phantom Menace movie, Darth Maul states, At last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last we will have revenge. So if the Jedi and Sith never fought one another in conflict or wars, and it was just Sith versus Sith only, answer this one question. Why and what are the Sith getting revenge on the Jedi for? If we take what George said from the 2019 quote that those people like to cherry pick so literally, then this line from episode one makes no sense at all since they never truly fought the Jedi at all and would have no motivation for revenge against the Jedi Order. And I showed the evidence of wanting revenge on the Jedi for losing above, so my point stands. Logic and common sense would tell you there was and had to be conflict between the two groups. Three, if George Lucas did not want any Sith Wars in the expanded universe, it would have never been allowed to happen in the first place. Nothing in the Expanded Universe was done without Lucas checking yes or no on things. 
Even then, what we see in the expanding universe actually really lines up with what George said and set forth. Even in that cherry pick 2019 quote too. Eventually in the expanded universe lore, the Sith basically were running most of the galaxy virtually unopposed by anyone. The Jedi, the Republic, the Republic pretty much existed in name only, with the holonet collapsing, and what was left of what consisted of the Republic anymore was just a few small number of safe worlds safeguarded by the Jedi, being the only thing there keeping the rest of what remained of the free, safe galaxy protected. And there was even a point where there were chancellors who were only Jedi because of how bad things were in the galaxy. The Dark Horse comic series, Knight Errant, actually is very close to what George Lucas had said in his vision here. In Knight Errant, again, the Sith controlled pretty much all the galaxy and were in a period of infighting amongst each other. In the comic, we see major Sith Lords such as Lord Damien and Lord Odian fighting each other, squabbling for power and territory while the remnants of the crumbled Republic and Jedi Order were not able to do much against it or about it. The supposed no Jedi Sith Wars Lucas made claims about. In Knight Errant, it's only a few brave Jedi doing mercy missions against the Sith, so they technically weren't really fighting a full war. George Lucas also says the Sith wiped themselves out, which is literally what happened to them when they vaporized themselves on Rusan with the Thought Bomb, believing they were collectively strong enough to survive the blast, while believing it would wipe out the Jedi for them. It all still fits. So you could say what George Lucas said was sort of true? From a certain point of view. And four. George Lucas is a man that tends to contradict himself on his words quite a few times. He's a man who cares more about, you know, the visual details and all that, being a filmmaker. And not only this, but with Lucas, he tends to speak in metaphors and exaggeration. And you really have to read between the lines on a lot of things he says and not take him so literally sometimes. People take his words so literally like the word of God, and if he says something that doesn't make sense or line up with what we see in the movies, people take it so literally still. Use your common sense and logical, rational reasoning instead of blindly following what a single person like Lucas says verbatim. We sometimes need to take things others say with a grain of salt because of this. So can we really take that 2019 quote seriously at all, considering George has said otherwise when he owned the company as I've shown? And even if we do go with how George changes his mind and flip-flops a ton on his words, he made the no Sith and Jedi Wars statement back in 2019 when he no longer had any control or say in the franchise or canon when he sold it. So what he said back in 2004 is more relevant in the discussion because he was in charge still. Honestly, let's see how the Starlog quote humpers like Grimm, who tend to use that 2019 quote, who hold on to George's word in highest regard and see what mental gymnastics they use to deny the evidence said right from Lucas I showed here. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you whenever I make another one. Hopefully I'll try to upload more often. It's been so hard for me to get videos out, but anyways, like I said, hope you enjoy it and I'll see you whenever I get around to making the next video.